Good morning. This is Valentine's Pairs by Philip Newman, which is not being posted by Val- in, on Valentine's Day unless Philip and I end up switching for some reason. But it does harken back to a very famous Philip Gass from, I believe, a couple years ago now, which was called Shot Through the Heart, which used this very similar kind of heart-shaped arrangement of lines and killer cages. I, that puzzle obviously was memorable. I still remember it years later, and I'm looking forward to another riff on the idea. I think it's a really beautiful layout. I love a good visual theme because that's something I don't feel like I'm very good at setting. So I always enjoy seeing them coming from the guys. Anyways, what are the rules? So, normal Sudoku rules. So we're placing the digits 1 through 9 exactly once each in each row, each column, and each 3x3 three three region. We also have some cages in the grid. Those are killer cages, and in those cages, digits do not repeat, and the digits in a cage have to sum to the number given in the top left corner. And also we have these pink lines that represent consecutive pairs, and the reason that they are lines here instead of the conventional consecutive pairs dots, I'm assuming there are two reasons, and the practical reason is that you can see Philip has given us some diagonally adjacent lines. Um, And generally you wouldn't be able to do that if you were using like a little white consecutive pairs dot. So these two digits, for instance, have to be consecutive numbers like two and three or six and seven. Second, it's cute. It lets us do this like lacy pink heart theme, which I'm really, really enjoying. And Philip has used them to kind of draw this heart shape all the way around the grid. I suppose we could use Renban but somehow that just seems a little bit um, a little overpowerful to use Renban just to only use two cell Renban. Um, I think people would be questioning like, why did you have to introduce the whole Renban Sudoku rule set just to do two cell lines? Uh, anyways, I like how the how this is presented. I think it's cute. I think it's thematic. Let's solve it. So there are some killer cages here that only have one option. So the only way to make three and two cells is one and two. The only way to make 16 in two cells is 7 and 9. The only way to make 17 in two cells is 8 and 9. The only way to make 4 in two cells is 1 and 3. There's another 16 for us. Are there any others that are fully restricted? 7 and 3 cells is always 1, 2, and 4. And that's all we've got that's literally just restricted right off the bat, although I see a few others that are going to become very restricted as soon as we clean all this up. So. What do we do from here? So this 1-3 pair eliminates 1 from here, because there can't be another 1 in the region. And now that's 1. 1 has to be consecutive with this digit, and there's only one number in the Sudoku universe that's consecutive with 1, and that's the number 2. Now, if you're going to fill a cage that sums to 8, let's work out our possibilities. So 8's quite small to do in 3 digits. We could go 1, 2, and 5. Or we could go 1 and 3 and 4. We can't start with anything bigger than 1, though, because even just like 2, 3, and 4 is already too big. It sums to 9. And so that's one way to work it out. Another possibility is that you just have seen this often enough that you just happen to remember, oh, 8 killer cage and 3 cells, there are only two ways to do that. That's one of those things that's used very, very often in puzzles, even in relatively straightforward puzzles. So it's worth keeping track of if you do a lot of these. Either way, both of those options, the key thing here is they both include a 1. And in fact, 8 and 3 cells always includes a 1. So there's a 1 in here. That makes this a 2. So that means we don't get to use a 2 in our 8 cage. (laughs) That has to be 1, 3, and 4. We can eliminate the 1 there, and because we know it has to be consecutive with 2, we now know it's a 3. That 3 makes this a 1, and the 1 makes this a 4. And now we have these two beautiful ones that are just sitting here on these consecutive pairs lines. And once again, little logical theme developing here, those can only be consecutive with the number two. So we're going to place some twos. Now, what next? I just placed a one here as well. So there's actually another instance of the same theme that's got to be consecutive with the two. And that's in a five cage. So that's going to make this a three. So this must be either a 2 or 4, and I don't think I quite have enough information to tell which yet. 3 is consecutive with either 2 or 4 also. That's kind of interesting. That's like a 2-4 pair. Uh, This is 4. I should have just filled out the remainder of my cage there. 9 with a 2 in it. The remaining two digits have to sum to 7. 
So they've got to be either one and six or two and five, or not two and five, three and four. <laughs> I really should know this. I'm a little tired this morning. I didn't sleep well last night. Um, anyways, this can't be one because then we would have to place a second two to go next to it. So that can't be six. But beyond that, what can we really do? I could bash this a bit with some math. I think I see a way forward with it. But this is gas, and I know that Philip wouldn't require us to do that, so I'm going to leave that for now. Let's instead look over at this region, because this is almost done, right? We only need 5, 6, and 8. This can't be a 5, because we can't place a 5 in a 10 cage like this. It would have to have two 5s, which breaks, so that's either 6 or 8. 8 would go with 2, 6 would go with 4. We already have a two in the row, so it's a six with a four. Now this five and eight has to also go with five or eight because one option to make 13 is a five eight pair. Now what goes here? We still need the digits one, five, seven, and nine, and eight. oh, I regret doing this already. What a mess. Maybe we can maybe we can save this though. Let's salvage this. So 13 cage and two can't have a one in it. Oh, I don't, I'm not going to work through the possibilities of that. What, what a disaster. I'm not going to do that at all. By the way, that's entirely on my... Uh, ooh. One moment. Oh, my partner's cat, who's my partner's cat when she's being bad, of course, just knocked my, um, my sparkling water onto the floor. And so now I have a very fizzy puddle on the floor next to my desk that I will deal with after I finish this video. Just one of those days. Um, what else can we do here? There's no two here. There's no one there. I, I'm feeling like it's this nine cage. Yeah, let's work out this nine cage. So the biggest digit that could ever be in a three cell nine cage is six, because we could go one and two to minimize the first two digits. And then the third digit would be nine minus one minus two, which would be six. So we can't go any bigger than six. This cannot be a 2, because there's a 2 there. This can't be a 3, this can't be a 1. That's interesting because now the minimum sum of these two is 2 and 3, which is 5. So this definitely can't be any bigger than 4, because 4 plus 5 is exactly 9. And now this also can't be... Okay, this is a little tangled, but I like it. This also can't be 1, because 1 would force a 2 to go into that cell, because the only digit that's next to 1 is 2. So that is a 4, that's a 2, and to finish up our 9, we have to place a 3. Now 4 can no longer go next to 3 in this region, so that's a 5. So if we have a 5 and an 18 cage, these are going to sum to 13. I'll leave that for now. The 5 resolves the 5 8 pair. Oh my god, it's actually fizzing all over the floor. <laughs> um, this is my dedication to providing good walkthroughs to you guys that I'm not like cutting this video and getting up to go clean. So that's now a 4 because the 2-4 pair is resolved. Um, now we need these two to sum to 8 to finish off the 12, and I believe the only way we can do that with any combination of these numbers is if it's 1 and 7. So that's now a 9, that's a 7. That resolves the 8-9 pair and places a 5 here, which because of the 13 cage places an 8 here. These have to be 5, 6, and 7, that, so that's a 7. And to finish off the 18, that's a 6, and that's a 5. 1 is definitely not consecutive with 6, so this has got to be our 7, and then that's our 1. The 7 we just placed makes that a 9 and makes that a 7. Very nice. Now we need to make a sum of 14 here. There's only two ways to do that, either 6 and 8 or 5 and 9, and 5 and 9 is definitely out of the question. So that's 6 and that is 8, and that means our remaining two digits are 2 and 3, which makes that a 4. So the only two digits we could place there to sum to 9 would be 1 and 6. 6 can't go next to 7 because there's already a 7, so that's a 5, and that is our last digit to sum to 10, which is a 3. We still need to place an 8 and a 9, and we're going to place them in this order for that region. Now in the rest of this column, we need a 7 and a 2, and the 2 will have to go there because there's already a 2 in the second row. Here we need an 8 and a 9, and here we need a 1 and a 3. Now what else do we need? We need a 2 and a 3 in this column, and they sure as heck can't go here because we have like a lot of 2s and 3s already, so they have to go there. That makes this our last digit, which is a 9. We get this 8-9 pair, we place an 8 in this region, and then we still need 1 and 6, which go this way around. Now here, we need a 6 in the row. These have to be 4, 5, and 7. 
This 15k has just been totally ignored so far. This can no longer be 7 and 8, so it must be 6 and 9. And then this digit will have to be a 7. And we need 1, 4, and 7 there. Let's look at some of these vertical columns now. So here we still need 4, 7, and 9, and that's a 4 and 7 in that row. So these are going to be 4 and 7, and we placed our 9. Now we need 5, 6, and 8 to finish the region, so we have a 5 there and then a 6, 8 pair. Now horizontally, this is looking pretty restricted. These are going to be 3, 4, and 7 to finish the row. 3 and 7 here place a 4, which resolves this stuff up at the top. That's now a 7, a 3, a 7, and a 4. And these are 8 and 9, 6 and 8, and 5 and 6. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's Valentine's Pair. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Or happy um, upcoming Valentine's Day. Hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you are spending your Valentine's Day um, lavishing love on the people close to you and or lavishing love and care on yourself. Thank you for being here with us today, and have a good rest of your day.